Hello everyone, Jacolo here, and welcome to the next episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Engineering. It's been a while since the last one, but you know, the show must go on! Anyway, today's video is a common request, which is a new one, actually. It also won the recent poll on Twitter. Remember to follow me on Twitter as well as Jacolo for some super shite! So, uh... Here we are. I have no idea how this is going to work out. Necros are an archetype focused on ritual summoning, with the effect monsters focusing on helping with ritual summons. Either by having an effect that's resolved when tributed, being able to be used as full cost, preventing any form of disruption, etc. When it comes to ritual monsters, they have two types of effects. One that can trigger in hand with a discard as cost, and an on-field effect. The in-hand effect is usually there to help with consistency or defense, while the on-field one are a take on the effects of the dual terminal's strongest synchro monsters, with the Ice Barrier Dragons leading the charge. I have to say though, I think I've seen a similar design when it comes to those ritual monsters, but where? Anyway, the Necros were introduced to the TCG as part of the Secret of Eternity set in January 2015. I actually didn't remember that. And a question to you, dear viewer, do you remember which Necros cards were introduced in that set? Leave your answers in the comments below and no cheating. Back to the main topic, the most remembered wave of support arrived in the Secret Forces booster pack a month later. The deck instantly became a competitive hit. It was so format warping that it actually changed the way people played during a match. Not to mention that some really obscure cards became side deck staples and haven't seen meta relevance ever since. Necros are a popular deck even to this day. Why else would I be talking about it? So now let's talk about the thing this video was made about! The Necros Engine. Since I was unable to google any solid ideas regarding the Necros Engine, I used the next best thing, YouTube comment section. With it, I was able to gather some information regarding this engine. Its most important role is to send Herald of the Arclight from the Extra Deck to the Graveyard as material for Necros Kaleidoscope to summon Necros of Unicorn. This gives the user a surge thanks to Herald and a 2300 attack level 4 floodgate monster on the field. And since rank 4 XCs are the biggest toolbox in the game, having a monster on the field is always a good idea. Since there's no definitive build for this engine, I'll propose one that I use myself. One Kaleidoscope, one Unicorn, one Herald of the Arclight or Elder Entity NTSS, Necros of Brionic and Necros of Colossalus. The last two are optional, but they give the engine additional searchability and by extension deck thinning. The engine is very small, not really hindering the card choices for the deck itself. Not to mention it also provides a floodgate level 4 monster on the field, negating the effects of all monsters summoned from the extra deck. Being a level 4 is also important since, like I mentioned previously, the rank 4 pool is the biggest one in the entire game. Not to mention that, depending on the monster used as tribute, the engine can provide additional search or spot removal. It's quite versatile in what it can do. The engine requiring two very specific cards in hand can provide bricks, in which you have only one of the components, but not the other, and that card is just... just there, in the hand, doing nothing. Not to mention the fact that the engine provides nothing in the protection department, only having a 2300 attack floodgate monster, which works only on extra deck monsters, meaning it's utterly useless against anything that doesn't utilize the extra deck. With Herald as target for Kaleidoscope, this engine is a great addition to any ritual deck, providing additional search. Outside of that, I could see it being used in something like Dogmatica as an additional way of sending NTSS to the graveyard from the extra deck, with the bonus of still allowing the user to have access to that extra deck. The entirety of the engine I presented in the previous sections, at its cheapest, will cost about $8.78, or €7.37, not counting shipping, of course. This is rather decent considering the advantage this engine can provide. YouTube comment section strikes again with a really neat engine idea, which I kind of built upon. I'll see you all later on Sunday during the stream. Also remember to subscribe, like, comment and all that good shit, since you can request me to cover another engine. And I'll do it. Eventually. Anyway, Jagolo's hanging out. Peace!